Amen. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you, God, for um, all the gathers here today to listen to your word and for us to pray. We pray, oh God, that you would unctionize us, anoint us afresh, fill us, oh God, with uh, your word, fill us with your prayers to pray tonight. We pray, oh God, that the prayers would have impact on the earth. And so, Father, we'll have a supernatural and natural effect in the earth. We pray a blessing upon the word that we're going to share, prayers that are going to be prayed in Jesus' name, and we shout, amen. So today we're going to talk about prayer and perseverance. Many people give up um, on prayer because they say they've been praying for the same thing over and over. I always say, if you're praying for the same thing over and over, that God wants you to be in his presence. That's it. In his presence, there is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pledges forevermore so therefore don't run from his presence run to his presence so if you are praying over a particular situation for a very very long time it means according to apostle Lowell hazel god wants you to be in his presence because when we pray we actually come into his presence i get to talk with our father so God, our Father, he wants to hear us. He wants to see us. As a matter of fact, you could spend time in his presence just in worshiping, worshiping him, praising him. Just say, God, this is your time. This is your hour. And you just lay before him. Some people call it soaking. And also you could walk and pray or run and pray. Daniel, he talked with God, but he walked. He talked with God kneeling down. He talked with God sitting down. He talked with God looking out his window to uh, Jerusalem. And that caused him to be thrown into the den of lions. So this will, God wants us to be persistent in our prayer. Jacob, he was persistent. I mean, he, he was wrestling with the Lord. He says in Genesis 32, 26, he says, I mean, here, here is the Lord. Or the angel of the Lord wanted to say, let me go. He says, I will not let thee go until, except thou bless me. I will not let thee go, except thou bless me, until I get the answer. I mean, that is um, standing in the gap. So therefore, do not give up. Praying for your sons, your daughters, your children, your great-grandchildren, standing in, in the place for them like Abraham. Do not throw in the towel. Do not give up and um, be like uh, Jacob, Genesis 32, 26. I will not let thee go except thou bless me until the answer comes. And so the most important and mightiest act a man or a woman can do on earth is to prevail with God in prayer. Prevail for a refreshing in our personal lives. Prevail for a revival in our personal life. Prevail for a revival in other believers' life. And oh, how we need a revival, a restoration, a reformation. We really need to hear from heaven. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn, I'll turn away from our wicked ways, or turn to God and pray. Then he says, then we will hear from heaven. We're going to heal our families, heal our church, and heal our land. And so we look at Elisha. It says that, and it came to pass, in the meanwhile, that the heaven was black with clouds and the wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. So before this, the man of God had pronounced that there should be no rain. And there was the rain in the land for three and a half years. And so it was time for the, to break the drought. And so Elijah was a man who knew how to break the drought. And so he went into prayer. And in Luke 18, what it tells us, and he spake a parable unto them to the end of that we, men ought always to pray and not to faint. We are not faint. Luke 18, 1. Don't give up. Elijah was not a man who gave up. Of all the mysteries of the, of the prayer world, 
the need of prevailing prayer is the one of the greatest of all the mysteries of the prayer world. The need of prevailing prayer is one of the greatest mysteries. And so therefore we do not give up. We do not know what's happening behind the scenes. Sometimes we give up and we throw in the towel, praying for our husband or wife, praying for some uh, person you think is real wicked in your family, the black sheep in your family, and you give up and you forgot to pray for an entire year and you forget to call their names. But as I always say, as long as there is breath and we are on the earth, we are to call their names. So this is one of the greatest mysteries of people stop praying and say, oh, I've been praying for revival in this church for 20 years and I haven't seen it yet. We'll keep on praying and get into the posture of Elijah. And it says, so Ahab went up to eat and to drink and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, there was always people who are not going to pray. This um, the king went up. You know, he had his own little, maybe his own well in his own yard. But he says, and so Ahab went up to eat and to drink. He had something to drink. <laughs> I don't know if he was bringing in um, water and wine from another country on Carmel's back. But there's always when the intercessor is praying, there's always somebody going. To after a club, a brother and sister are uninterested and something they are Christians too, and you're praying and you say, man, I, I, I could relax. And then you say, I mean, why are they praying and all that prayer? But so Ahab went up to eat and to drink. There will always be people who are not interested in praying, are uh, praying at the level that you're praying at. It could be husbands, wives. Uh, brothers, sisters, people of the same household, people in the same church will just be really nearly about prayer. And so therefore, prayer is the Christian's vital breath. We got to pray. When we pray and release prayer in the earth, it would never ricochet back to you. It goes to God and have effect. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and he cast himself down upon the earth. I always have a picture of him cast himself upon the earth and put his face between his knees. I mean, that's, that's some Burton uh, stuff. I preached that many times. Gave birth in prayer, knelt down, put his face between his knees. If you want to get into the, pes- the posture of Elijah, yes, you can kneel down on your bed under your bed, out in your yard. I mean, I, I got to give birth to something up in this house, up in this church. And so he knelt down, put his face between his knees, no distraction, and said to his servant, go up now, look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And so therefore he got into the birthing position to birth rain in the land. And his Servant says, I don't see a thing. All I see is clear sky. And But Elijah was not discouraged. And he said unto him again, go as, as seven times. Uh, First Kings 18, 40 to 43. Go and look at the seven times. Seven times he went. And while Elijah is praying, his servant is looking. Okay. And so therefore he was persevering, okay? Um, Elijah persevered. And so the fact that there was no sign of rain did not stop him. He said, him, go again seven times. He said to his servant while he prayed and importune, according to Luke 18, one says pray, and we are to pray as saints and not faint. We have to pray and not give up. When these days the enemy is putting everything, tightening up the screws and the believers. But one thing you got to do, you got to pray and not faint. You got to have a friend in the church who you can call, call and say, can you pray with me? Pray in the spirit. And so Ephesians 5.18 says, be not drunk with wine. Wherein is excess. But be filled with the spirit. 
it, it's easy to drink some wine and be inebriated and then you go to sleep. But when you wake up, the problem's going to be still be there. But when you're filled with the spirit, I mean, on, on heaven's age, wine of the spirit, when you, when you go to sleep and you're awake, God will, be, has be, will begin to take care of the issues and you see, and sometimes the prayers are answered as we get in the, the, the new wine. And when we pray in the spirit, we are filled with new wine. We fill, we fill. And that's what God wants us to do. And sometimes the answer comes and we are not aware. And we are not aware of the answer coming or, or, or the prayer being answered. Colossians 4, 2 says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. So we are to continue in prayer. We, that we are not supposed to give up. Continue in prayer. We are to continue in prayer. That is persevere. Push in prayer. So my encouragement to you tonight is to, to pray and to pray whether you see the answer or not, continue. Elijah uh, was praying and looking. Yes, watch and pray. Yes, for the answer. And the answer is on its way. And so the Lord, in seeking the Lord, he must, you must be diligent. Not hit and miss. Let, let us, as people of God, be diligent. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, But without faith... It is impossible to please him. By faith, we came into the kingdom of God. By faith, we accept Jesus Christ. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that God is, that God is there, that God is listening to us, that when we pray, God hears us, that God is there. And that he is, again, a rewarder of them. You must believe that he is and must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And so, therefore, do not give up. Now, there are people who are praying and say, God, I need a husband. I need a wife. They haven't seen um, either the wife or the husband as yet. But keep on persevering. Write down your dream. Write down your goals on a piece of paper. Tell God what you want. Tell God how you want to look. Tall, handsome, tall, fat, dark, whatever. Long curly hair, rubby hair, whatever. Write it down. Pray over it. And God will see that they come into your life. Now you remember when they start acting nice that you prayed for them. So Hebrews 11 says that we, we must be diligent in seeking God. And it takes faith. And we all shout faith. So faith... What is faith? Faith knows, faith knows for certain that not a single believing prayer can fail of its effect in heaven. Not one believing prayer that we pray and comes out of our mouth will fail, all because of faith. Faith is given substance to the things we hope for. As we pray, for, we say, we say, God, I thank you. We, we, we see it manifesting. There are some things in our faith walk, faith book we can draw, some we can write, some we can describe. But we, we, we must continue believing. We must continue persevering. Faith is giving substance to the things we hope for. I mean, I, I just I mean, I just thought about something. I, I didn't say really use my faith all that good. And I said, I need a... Um, uh, what I need a, a, a fruit a fruit processor. I think that's the name of it, right? See that? Oh, yeah, fruit blender. I said, I need one because I had like one, two, three, and just went half a cook. And then all of a sudden, somebody comes and says, I got something for you. So I went to their office, picked up this big bag, and inside of it was the what? Was it, sweetheart? The fruit blender. And man, I'm juicing. A, a juicer? Oh, Jesus, I'm juicing now. So uh, our pastor's going to look good, lean and mean. So, so I just, I, just I, I wish I could get one. I, I, but you came out one on the island and then these are too expensive. 
and but I got it. I got it before Christmas. I got it before Christmas. So God takes care of you when we pray. Uh, or when we even have a thought for something. And that's how powerful it is. So faith is giving substance to the things we hope for. Give substance to it. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. When you, the more you hear the word, faith okay, develops within you. Faith is grown up within you. Faith is developed. If faith comes by hearing, then the responsibility to have faith rests with us and not with God. So people say, oh, uh, God, give me faith. It, it rests with us. Okay? And so therefore, it rests with us. It is our responsibility, not God, to cause our faith to grow. So if faith comes by hearing, then the responsibility to have faith rests with us and not with God. So we are supposed to hear God's word and it develops by reading the word of God, hearing it preach, faith comes. So if faith comes by hearing, then the responsibility to have faith rests with us and not with God. It is our responsibility, not God, to cause our faith to grow. So it's your responsibility to cause your faith to grow by listening to the word of God read to you from your iPhone, iPad, your computer, read it with your eyes, listen it with your ears, and let your faith go. These are the best of time for our faith to grow. And so therefore, the, 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 where did um, Elijah got the seven from? I, he was a good Bible student. Because in, in Leviticus 4 and 5, 17, 8, 11, 14, is, is a biblical principle. In Leviticus chapter 4, Five, it says, and the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. Leviticus 4 17. And the priest shall dip his finger in some of the blood. The anointed, the anointed priest should dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle it how many times? Seven times before the Lord. So the priests and the prophets, they, they knew about this Levitical order. And, he, and they were, he sprinkled it before the Lord, even before the veil of the temple. The biggest 8, 11. And, and he sprinkled the, thereof upon the altar seven times and anointed the altar again. And in verse 11, and he sprinkled thereof upon the, he sprinkled upon the altar seven times again. Okay. And anointed the altar and all his vessels, he anointed, sprinkled it, anointed the altar with the blood and all the vessels, both the laver and his foot to sanctify them. So the blood was used to sprinkle upon the altar, upon the anointed vessel seven times. So therefore, Elijah was flowing with the, the, the prophetic commandment. Leviticus 14, 16 says, and the priest shall dip his, his right finger into the oil. They went from the blood, now the oil, that is, that is in his left hand and shall sprinkle of the oil with his fingers. How many times? seven times all right so that's good um, info when you're preaching elijah one again so they had seven times and he was just following the prophetic order of things the covenantal elliptical order of seven and so i'm not going to give up i'm, I'm going to stick with the number seven the god's perfect number and so therefore let no delay shape your faith shape our feet Delay caused people to backslide. Delay caused people to give up. I don't want to the pastor, the apostle, the church, not, nothing about church because they, they didn't get their dream husband, dream wife, dream car, dream house. Stay, but stay, stay, stay the course. And you will see. Of faith, it holds good. It says the word of God in Mark 4 28. First, the blade, 
then the air. This is talking about the corn, then the full corn in the air. And so therefore, you got to stay with it. It is, it is a process. It talks about a faith process, importuning, prevailing until the answer come. So each believing prayer that you pray brings a step nearer to the final blow or the final victory. If you want a, a, a breakthrough, each believing prayer, every time I pray, I am believing that my prayers are answering. If I see doubt coming, I begin to pray in the spirit. I'm going to do some of that tonight. I pray in the spirit. I shake the house in the spirit. Shake the church. Wherever we are, we pray in the spirit. Each believing prayer begins a step nearer to the final victory or the final breakthrough. Believe in the prayers that you pray. Believe that they're not going to fall to the ground. Believe that they're going to have impact in the heavenlies. Okay, no discouragement here for Elijah and no discouragement here for the believer. Elijah was not discouraged even by the seventh repetition of praying and of the, his servants coming with this, the, the phrase, there is no rain. Go again and look. I haven't seen my wife yet. Go ahead again and pray. I haven't seen my husband yet. Go again and pray. I haven't seen my money yet. I haven't seen my house yet. Go again and pray. I haven't seen the, the, the church turn around. We've gone off. It just you. Anybody have any? I could hear you, brother William. Um, Elder Williams. So, Apostle don't know that he got he got cut off. He cut off. audio. He probably doesn't know he lost audio for everybody. Yeah. He, um. Me. Hmm. Okay, join my thirty-three-three. Are you hearing me there? Call and call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And in Ephesians 3 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Hallelujah. So there I stop.
And uh, if you can hear me, I don't know if we had anything with the sound going out, but you could unmute and we can talk about prayer and perseverance in prayer. Anything, any revelation you got, any input, you can jump in now. You can just unmute. I see Sonia Malone, you, you unmute. You want to say something? Yeah. I unmuted. Go ahead. You want to say something? <laughs> no, I unmute because I wasn't hearing you before, but... Um, okay, so you're hearing me now. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you come back in. But okay. I was say with, um, the prayer, and with prayer, we got to continue to con continue asking. Sometimes we feel we shouldn't ask, but we need to continue to pray and let our faith grow, trusting God that he is going to answer. Because as long as we're walking in the word and doing what the word is say, because if Ahab didn't keep sending his soul, he keeps sending his soul out there to check. Ahab wanted rain and Elijah were praying and said, go back and see, go back and see all the time. But you have to be consistent in looking for what God is about to do. That's right. Persistent and consistent. All right, that's beautiful. Thank you. Anyone else want to jump in? I have room for one or two more, and then we're going to pray. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I would like to basically say, we, um, let's try in... There are times I, I hear a lot of people say, oh, we don't know what to pray for. And I always say to myself, you know, you got your health, you have your strength. You have the working of your five fingers. You have your working of your hand. You have your mouth that's working. Be thankful. You know, because I can give you a quick testimony. I had locked jaw. Went to the dentist, did a filling. Anesthesia was done. It wear off. And then some, I felt something wasn't right, but I didn't pay no mind. It's still when I tried to eat a can and a cob, I could not open my mouth. Okay. I was like a little kid. You know how when you give the babies the, the nice little um, brownies? Hands were dirty and mouth so was mouth. That's the way I was. I kid you not. Okay. And I said to myself, I said the things we take for granted, even to opening our mouth to put food in. Okay. And even I couldn't even stick out my tongue. Even to that, I couldn't even do. And just saying that, we got to pray for everything. Pray for ourselves. Pray, put your hand on your head. Start praying for everything in the body to work as it's ought to function. We must cover ourselves with the blood of our family, with the blood of Jesus. I'm talking to myself too, because I have to remind myself every day. Because I'd be like, I don't know what to pray. I'm like, nope, stop. I'm, stop. I'm doing my best to stop saying that. Stop. If I pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is saying, we will know what needs to be prayed for. And prayer is, is something that we got to do daily and pray without ceasing, you know, pray for our families, pray for ourselves, pray for our co-workers, you know, pray for us to do move in a different direction or this direction am I supposed to go? Hey, am I supposed to take a detour over here? You know, and once, once we just be before the face of the Lord and continue to have that communication with him and our relationship as we develop our relationship with him. Mm we will know um, where to go. And all I'm saying is push ourselves to even pray even all the more, like the apostle said this evening. Prayer, persistence, fervency, mm -hmm. no matter what, no matter how you feel. Sometimes I'd be like, oh God, like, nope, get out. I don't know I don't know what you are. Nope, nope, nope. You're not going to sit on me. Nope, nope. Move. Prayer Time changes to pray. things. Time to pray. Time to pray. And you mm -hmm. keep praying. Because I even was you know, hair at my grandmother's and I was cleaning and I start to pick up stuff like from work, I'm cleaning and I'm like, oh, I don't want to come to work and da, 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 da. And guess what? When I went to work, that was the same word that were being said. And I say, no, 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 no. I said in the thing, think about it this way. In the spirit of gratitude, since we're having Thanksgiving, I say, you do not, this is not a requirement. I'm just saying in, um, in the spirit of gratitude, Okay, find three things that you are thankful for. Write them down for three days. There are three things until Thanksgiving or whenever time you feel that is necessary until you get over that thing of being not grateful for where you work. 
because there are things that do happen at work that cause you to feel the way you do. However, you have to remember your job is also providing you your finances and whatever monies that you need. Okay. So from there, when I said that, I automatically felt a change. Yes, there were still a couple of people that were still fussing on whatever the case may be, but you can feel the atmosphere had already changed just because of what I said. And I said, it's also important for us to recognize certain things and not only that, but to put another word in the atmosphere to negate that or to counteract. Thank you very much. You have a blessed evening. God bless. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Okay. So thank you for sharing. You know. And so we're going to go into prayer. Amen. We're going to begin by praying. Pray. Hello? Come over there, God. You want to say something, um, Elder William? Hello? Yeah. That's what you wanted to say something. I did want to say something. Go ahead. Say something. You go ahead. A, look, just quick, quick and short. In our praying, in our praying, most important, we shall not forget to pray one for another. Because Amen. there is that there will be time when I feel like I don't want to pray because when so much stuff hitting me left and right and you just you just got your hand up in a cover position or just standing. And as you stand in, you need people to be standing for you and praying for you. And I need people to be standing for me and you need to have time when you need people to be standing for you, praying you through that time. So we have to remember most importantly, pray one for another. It's one Amen. thing to be going after the one, going out into the deep, 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 deeper things. We cannot neglect each other because that's the key for us, all of us, to be strong. We have to cover each other. Yes, yes, Thank yes. You. Amen, amen. Amen. Good. That's, that's true. That. That's true. That's something good for you. Amen to that. Want to say something, Mr. Sonia? Good. You want to say something, Mr. Sonia? Or are you good? No, I'm fine. I say you amen. Amen. That. amen. Okay, that's wonderful. Okay, so we're gonna pray. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We got some uh, prayer points that we're gonna pray for some folks, and we're gonna pray in the spirit. We're gonna pray. Uh, Williams, you could pray for Minister I Iona's uncle and also her mother, her mother, uh, but her uncle. Um, need some encouragement in prayer. A little elderly, but we're gonna pray strength. They stay on the earth a little longer. Okay, so Minister Iona, okay, and uh, you're gonna have uh, Minister Sonia and Prophet Gums, um, um, sister, uh, El, uh, Minister Gwen Gums and her husband James Gums. You know, can you pray for them? You know, both had some um, up, both had operations. I tell you. So we're going to pray for God would strip themselves, angels, they would undergird them um, during, the, um, during the Thanksgiving period. So we're going to pray for them also. Okay. And then uh, we're going to have um, Minister, so we're going to go at rapid fire. And we have uh, Minister Rene. You're going to pray for Minister Cleon. Okay. Just pray God's protection. It's just a little procedure uh, done. And we pray that God would continue to, to speed up the healing in her body. Amen. And then also, we're going to pray for Taddy. Uh, that's, um, um, he was at the ER. We're going to pray for total healing and restoration for Taddy. That's um, Minister Judy's um, grandson, Elijah's son. Okay, so that's, I think that's three. I think, I think that's, that's, that's good. Okay, so Elder Williams, you go first, then followed by Minister Sonia, then also by Minister Rene. And then after that, we will get the other, the other prayer um, organized. Go ahead. Is the name in the Sayonara's dad name or granddad? Uh, she's on. She's on. I know her mom is Will Curson, I hope. And her uncle. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in the Are you there? I think she's on. She could unmute. But you'll say uncle for now. Okay. Hallelujah, Father God. We just thank you that you have given us this opportunity, Lord God, to speak to you, and that you hear us when we speak, Father God. It's such an awesome and just a, 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 a mighty God, just a gracious God, to look at beings as ourselves, with our flaws and our, 
our flesh and our issues, Lord God, and yet avail yourself to us to be heard and to, to be used for your glory. And we're taking that lightly, Lord God, as I pray this evening, I pray that your anointing will rest, Lord God, and that the words that come up in my, my mouth this evening will be filled with your spirit and go forth and, and, and do that which is being sent forth to do. Even now, Lord God, I bring Minister Ayana's uncle before you, Lord God. You know the situation. And I cover him even now. We cover him with your precious blood from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Feet, Lord God, we speak healing. We speak restoration. We speak to his mind. We speak to his vessels. We speak to his cells. We speak to every sinew in his body, every bone, Lord God, his very spirit, Lord God. And we say, be healed. We say, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, even Minister Iona, I pray your peace, Lord God, that surpasses all understanding. Strengthen her, Lord God, and give her endurance, a refreshing and a renewing and a, a vigor as she's going through this time with her family, Lord God. Strengthen her and those around her, Lord God. We hold her up in prayer even now, Lord God, and we declare that she's whole and she's well also, Lord God, and she's strengthened and she's rolling even now with a renewed sense of energy and urgency of, and, and, and vigor believing that that which the Lord said to do, he can do, he will do for her uncle, for her family, and all the desires of her heart, Lord God, we pray that they will be met, Lord God. Again, we cover her uncle, and we call him heal, whole, and well, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we give you praise tonight. We give you glory. We honor you, O oh God, for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you as we come corporately together, believing, O oh God, and covering each other in prayer. I lift up Minister Gums, Gwen Gums before you right now, Heavenly Father. Thank you, God, for healing your children, O oh God. Thank you for the desire to heal your people. So I come, O oh God, on behalf of Minister Gwen and her husband, O oh God who have suffered and who are God is going through right now. I ask in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you will touch Minister Gwen and touch Brother Gum from the crown of his head to the tip of his toes, oh God. And so God, we thank you for complete healing of their body, oh God, what they're going through. For the songwriter said, there is a palm in Gideon for the sin sick soul. And so God, tonight we bring them before you. We thank you that, oh God, your heart, hallelujah, that you created them, oh God, and their body. So you are the great physician. So we thank you right now for the healing powers that are going to be flowing through their body right now, especially brother comes, oh God. Father, your word said that, oh God, by your strength, we are healed. And so God, we thank you, God, for your healing. We thank you for every infirmity, oh God, that are healed out of their body right now. And because you carry the infirmities in your body for us, oh God, every disease, oh God. And so God, we thank you for there's no disease in heaven. So we give you praise, oh God, today, oh God, tonight, tomorrow, and every day. We stand, oh God, proxy for them right now. And so Father, we give you glory. And so far as we as I bring them up before you, oh God, Minister Gumton, Brother Gumps, oh God, we thank you, God. We be speech you, we, we be speech you the night, oh God, for the healing palm of Gideon that will flow in their affected part of their body, oh God. Help them to continue to walk by faith, oh God, and not by sight. We give you praise, oh God. We give you glory. We thank you for sending the wings of healing upon them right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. For you promised us, oh God, that you are going to heal our body. For healing is the children's bread, oh God. And so, Father, we bless you tonight. We honor you in the name of Jesus. And we give you glory. We give you honor. And anyone else, oh God, on the song of my voice tonight that is sick among us. Thank you for touching us, oh God. Even though the pain rock our body, we cry out to you, oh God, and we give you glory. We thank you for touching and healing, oh God, your children in Jesus' mighty name. 
Amen and amen. Father God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. You are so everlasting and you are so great and you are so awesome. God, I want to just thank you for Elder Cleon, Lord God. And I just say thank you, Lord, because Lord God, when I had my operation, I know everybody was praying. And Lord God, I want to thank you, Heavenly Father God, for them those same prayers to even be more fortified than it is tonight. Right now, in the name of Jesus, go into Sister Cle Elder Cleon right now, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord God, I thank you right now in the precious name of Jesus that her body is responding to that surgery correctly. Lord God, I also pray, Heavenly Father, whatever medication, whatever is missing, God, I thank you, Heavenly Father, God, that your power, your healing power, your healing virtue is touching her right now at this very moment, easing up that pain right now in the name of Jesus. And God, we're praying for Taddy right now in the name of Jesus. And we say, touch Taddy, touch Taddy, yes, yes, touch yes. him, Lord. Touch Taddy. Yes, yes. Visit him, Lord. Touch Taddy, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Touch him, Lord. Touch him, Lord. Touch Taddy. Touch him in the name of Jesus. Touch him, Lord. Touch him from the crown of the head of the sole of the feet. Touch him in his innermost being. Mm -hmm. Touch him, Lord, as he worship you. Touch him, Lord, in the name of Jesus where he at. He's going to lift you up and praise your name. God, I said, touch him. Touch him. Touch him in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for doing such a thing for Taddy tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Back to you, Apostle. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for the went ahead. And we're going to pray. We're going to have our pastor Evelyn. She's going to pray. We're going to send you some weather patterns forming up. This is some El Nino. So I want to bring rain and some wind, they say, our way. But we're going to pray. We'll just get the drizzle to fill our systems and let the big heavy rain go out to sea. Let it be a sailor's wind and rain. Go ahead, Pastor Evelyn. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father God, because you're a good God. You're a great God. You're the creator of heaven and earth. And Father God, in your word, you've commanded us, Father God, that to take the authority that you've given us, Father God, and to decree and to declare and to speak, Father God, to situations. And so, Father God, we speak to the winds and the waves. And Father God of the Caribbean Sea, of Father God, the area that is seemingly wants to still be troubled. Although technically the, the, the hurricane season is gone, Father God, we want to um, find different ways and, and say that how something is still out there brewing. But we command right now the temperatures of the waters to be in the right way that, that the storm does not form. We come against everything that will make a storm to form and we cancel. Father God, we abort. Father God, we cancel the plans yes, of the yes, end. Yes, yes, and we yes. say peace. Peace, peace, be still. Father God, you spoke to the winds and the waves and we have, you've commanded us to do the same. We have already had a praise and a thanksgiving service, Father God, for at the end of the, of the hurricane season, last week, Wednesday to be exact, on November 30th. And now they want to still say that things are happening out in the, in the, in the sea and disturbances here and disturbances there and they're mm -hmm. flooding mm -hmm. here and mm -hmm. there. we speak to the winds and the waves yeah. we speak yeah. to the atmosphere and we decree and declare and it is so we've already said father god it is done and father god there will be no storm father god forming you Amen. said and no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper and we look at a storm as a weapon and we say it will not prosper it will dissipate mm -hmm. father god every condition mm -hmm. father god mm -hmm. the warm weather the warm waters mm -hmm. father god will be cooled father god in, in some places even snowing so we we put coolness to the temperatures mm -hmm. of the water yes. that um, hurricanes to form. They will not form, they will not prosper, and they will not harm any mm -hmm. island. Father God, they will dissipate, they will dissolve, they will just dry up. And so we thank you, Heavenly Father, that thank you, you are God and God all alone. And we thank you, Father God, that you care for your children. And Father God, we thank you for the hedge of protection round about each and every one of us, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, for just a regular a nice December with cool Christmas breeze. And so we thank you, Father God.
that the Caribbean, the islands shall praise you. The islands will give you praise. They will realize, Father God, that things will come in their pathway. But Father God, you've spared them. And so we thank you, Father God, that you did not bring any hurricanes around our, our path this, this, this year. And Father God, we continue to pray and we continue to, to just thank you, Father God, for your goodness and for your mercies and for the authority that you've given unto us to, to do exactly what you said to do, to decree and declare. And so we've decreed and we've declared and we thank you, Father God, for your goodness. Surely your goodness and your mercies, they follow us. They surround us, Father God, the favor of God surround us. And so we thank you, Father God, for hedge of protection round about each and every one of us. Our homes are protected from the elements, Father God. And so we thank you and we give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor and we bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen, amen. 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 Thank you for praying. Amen. amen. Anyone else up would like to pray? I see just the hand up. And if you are available to pray. Is um, Minister Malone with you, Elder Williams, close by? Uh-huh. Uh, no. no, Elder, yeah, Marlene. Minister Marlene. Marlene. Elder Williams, is Minister Marlene with you? Or are you looking for somebody to pray? Elder Williams. Yes, is, is uh, Minister Marlene close by you? Or is something we miss her? We, we, we forget she's there with you or something. I want to just pray and praise God, Pastor, this time. Um, Heavenly Father, gracious God, I just want to thank you for fellowship, for prayer, for the ability to give thanks, the ability to pray. Father God, I want to thank you just for touching my family, my church family, my natural family, Father God, my family near and far. I continue to keep and intercede for family, for my son, Father God. I wanna thank you for the healing touch that you have given me, the miracle for the surgery that I had uh, for six, uh, two consecutive um, surgeries I just had, Father God. And I ask you to continue, God, to bring the healing over my body um, for the doctors, Father God. I want to thank you, Lord, for the doctors that I didn't have to fly out that the doctor came from Miami. So Father God, I want to lift him up and the service that they're providing here in this territory, Father God, I thank you for them. Father God, I am so grateful. I am so grateful and thankful for all the abundant miracles that you have performed in our journey, all of us. Touch our families near and far. Father God, as we enter this season, oh God, let be this season for the reason to just glorify you for sending your precious son, Jesus. Amen. And so far, let us not forget, oh God, the reason for this season. And we just ask you, oh God, as we're prevailing into this new year, come in. Father God, as pastor has said in his services, that give us the strength, oh God, to trust you to put you first and we know that the season that is coming is a season of harvest for 2023 and what we didn't have for this year we're going to finish very strong and we really graciously from the bottom of our heart the saints thank you thank you god we can't thank you enough for the bountiful for your favor for your miracles your signs and your wonders upon us in jesus precious name we touch and agree amen amen Amen. Amen. Good. Amen. Thank you for that prayer. Uh, Elder uh, Williams, I was looking to see if um, Minister Marlin was close by. I'm not sure if we're going to respond. No, she was. She was the last prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, okay. She's not today. okay. 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 She's not close by. Okay. So I don't want to forget her. So then we forget her. So then we're not we're together. Okay, so I'm going to pray. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we just pray and we, we thank you, God, for the, for the word that we had tonight. We thank you for everyone who came up. Lord, we thank you, Father, that we're going to pray like men like Elijah, men like Jacob, who said, I will not let as it go as we pray for our family members, our government, our finance, our home, our car, husband, wife, whatever is the desire of our heart. And you say, God, as we pray, you're going to give us the desires of our heart and we are not yeah, going yeah. to let go.
because the pressing but when in faith. Okay, faith, faith tells us that our prayers, they will never fail. They will hit the target and heaven will respond and answer them. And so we pray over our land. We pray, God, as we go over into 2023, we pray, God, for a restoration, revival, yes, yes. a refreshing revival. We always pray for this prayer in our land. We're not going to give up praying before God. And Father, we stand before you like men like Moses when you wanted to destroy a people because of what's happening in our land. Our young men that are destroying one another, killing one another. We see them that wait until night time. They're doing it high day now. So they have become brazen, brave. Lord God, that we need some of these men in the kingdom of God. We call for some of these brave souls in the kingdom of God. We pray, God, that Lord God, that no mother, no other mother, family member would, would be crying during December. Or oh, the, the young men, young women with targets on their back, people who are looking for them, gangs that are looking for them to retaliate. We pray, Lord God, that bullets will hit there, or uh, they will miss uh, their target by far. Guns will disappear, bullets will disappear, guns yes, will jam yes. in the name yes, and the yes. blood of Jesus. Lord God, Lord God, we will repent on the behalf of the blood of our sons and daughters that are yes. crying out in, in our region. And so, Father, we are praying, Lord, cause us, God, to touch the, these young men as we drive by them. We, we know their name, and we just pray for them. Lord, God, we pray for a John as we, we, we drive by. And I'm going to do that when I go into see my mother in the Jayad. I, mean, I pray as I go through. I say, Father, you got to touch these people. you got to touch them. I mean, and they're, they're selling their wares uh, with a target on their back because somebody has want their turf. And so, Father, in the name of your touch, Lord God, let, Lord God, during this season, as we trouble the water at Bethsaida, to trouble the water, trouble the drug dens and the drug spots in our land. Let yes, the angels go yes, and yes, us yes. and rustle in the trees. Yes, let them see signs and wonders. Let them see the blood of Jesus dripping and dropping upon their forehead. Lord God, those signs and wonders, let angels show up. Let, while we pray, angels assist us and minister to them in places where we cannot go, where we, we cannot go and talk to these people. Lord, in the name of Jesus, go into the drug den and the Lord God that angels assist us let they hear our prayers praying for them for the young men to put on their guns for them to come and put their trust and faith in us the Lord and so Father now we just thank you let your blood flow upon our streets let your blood flow upon every door post in St. Thomas St. Thomas is much smaller than Egypt so the angels can just fly through and put the blood and every door closed to protect us from evil, protect us during the, during the December time when folks may want to come and break into our house to just take up a gun and fight in the air, just to practice a gun. In the name of Jesus, we cancel them in our communities in the name and the blood of Jesus. And so, Father, give us a blessed end of the year. Uh, we, we pray and we decree and we declare we're going to end this year well we're going to end it good we're going to end it strong and even as I had a, a wish and you took care of my wish and gave me the food processor Lord I thank you that we, those who are, have a thought to so take care of our thoughts Lord God and our plans our dreams and our vision and as we come to the accumulation of this year just like how somebody called and said, come on down, I got something for you at my office. They're going to call um, everyone on this line and say, I got something for you. Or I, uh, it's in the mail. Check your PayPal. Check whatever um, collecting system you have. Uh, Mevo, Zello, whatever. I'm sending you money in the mail, sending you money in an app. And so, Father, in blessing, bless all those who have been faithful to pray. Uh, for the body of Christ, pray for the global lifers, pray for Lord God, the, the government, pray Lord God for educational system, social system, pray, send prayers out in multitude on our streets, praying for our young men, young women, praying for the salvation of souls in the house, out the house, praying for global life church, praying for us to rebound back after Lord God, the pandemic, Lord, I bounce back, let the blood cause us to really bounce back in 20. 
23. Wake up the sleeping giant the church. And because you say you're coming for a revival church. You're coming for the church. The, the, the last day church is a, a, a revived church. And so, Father, the, the devil's uh, trickery will not work on the last day's church. So, Father, in prayer, we attack and we erase the trickery of the, the enemy and the demons uh, to cause people, oh God, to be waylaid and cause them to be unconcerned about the things of God um, throughout Christendom, throughout your congregations of the earth, cause us a God in 2023. Let this, um, as we cross over, let there be a time of dreams and visions, awakening up of uh, ministries, awakening up of the believers so they could catch the fire once again and run with it. We call for the backsliders back into the kingdom of God. We call them by name. We call their spirit. Tell them, come back and be awakened and come back to be a son and a daughter of God doing the work of the kingdom in the name and the blood of Jesus. Lord, we pray over our night rest tonight. We pray, Father, we cancel counting sheep. We thank you, Father, that you're going to give us the best sleep ever in the name and the blood of Jesus. And during these cool and cold days, you're going to bless us with good dreams, angelic visitations, dreams of heaven, of creativity, and uh, uh, your plans for our lives and uh, get a book and write it down as we go over into 2023. So in blessing, bless your people, bless the believers, we pray, who are always at the stuff, praying. There must be a reward for us. We reward them consciously. We will not come up zero during this season. We will come up blessed. Press down, shaking together and running over. In Jesus' name, and we all shout. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Uh, stop the recording. Yeah. Hallelujah.